Hey, what up everyone? It's Brian here with Kaufman Home Automation. We just released an update for the bulb with a couple new settings. So I wanted to get on here and run through all the settings, make sure everything's really well explained and demonstrate what I can. Um, so by default here on the right is what you're going to see. You've got the main light entity here under controls. That's going to turn the bulb on and off. The main light entity, it's going to have either color temperature mode or uh, color mode. So you can either choose an RGB color or a color temperature. In color temperature mode, it's just going to use the warm white and cold white LEDs. And you can see as you slide back and forth, it kind of uh, goes between the two. Uh, if you go all the way warm, you're going to have only the warm LEDs. Um, if you go all the way cold, you're only going to have the cold LEDs. Um, and then you can kind of see here the warm, which ones are the warm, which ones are the cold. There's 10 of each. The warm are a little more orange. And then in uh, color mode, then is when the five RGB lights are used. Um, they're between the white lights. And by default, the RGB mode, it will um, white blend. So if you go more toward the middle of the color wheel, it's gonna blend in some white with it. I think it just makes the color look a little better. On the other hand, color temperature, it's not gonna do that. Color temp is just the white LEDs only. And now for the settings, I'm gonna zoom in so we can see it a little better. The first setting here is a default fade length, and I've set that by default at 250 milliseconds. And so that's just the fade when you change the main light uh, value, how long it's gonna take. Um, so you can see 250 milliseconds, pretty quick. Uh, if you wanted to make it a little longer, 2.5 seconds here, uh, it just slows it down a little bit. You can always you know, use a service call and set whatever fade length you want on an individual basis, but uh, this is nice because you can just set it uh, once and then anytime you turn it on or off, you're going to get the same fade length. The second setting here is cough bulb effect. And right now it's just none or WLED DDP. And I did a whole video on using these bulbs with DDP. So um, you can check that out. But basically, if you know how to use DDP, it shouldn't be much of an issue. And then the last setting you'll see by default is the cough bulb power on state. And basically by default, the bulb when it powers up is gonna be always on bright white. That means every time it loses power and gets power back, uh, it's gonna turn on bright white. And so that's basically, so you could use it as kind of a regular bulb if you wanted to with a switch that turned power on and off to the bulb. This always on uh, last value is also always gonna turn the bulb on when power comes up, except that instead of being bright white, it's gonna return to whatever RGB color or color temperature that you had it on before. Restore power off state, that's gonna always return to whichever uh, state the bulb was in when it lost power. So if the bulb was off, it's gonna stay off. If the bulb was on, it's gonna turn back on. And then always off, uh, the bulb's just always gonna stay off when power comes back. And that's all of the settings that you get by default in Home Assistant. Um, but you probably notice that there's a lot of disabled entities here. So I'm gonna enable those real quick and then walk through them. Um, but I should also mention that you can get to any of those settings without having to enable them in Home Assistant by just clicking Visit Device here. That's going to pull up the web interface here that's actually running on the bulb. And that's going to allow you to uh, manipulate any of the entities here without having to enable them in Home Assistant. All right, now that everything's enabled, um, let's start with the cold RGB and warm RGB light entities. Um, these are configuration entities, which means they're not directly controlling the light per se. It's actually more of a configuration for the bulb. Like I mentioned before, uh, by default, when you're in color temp mode, you're just going to only get the uh, warm and cold white LEDs. Um, but let's say you're not happy with those color temps or the exact colors. Um, the cold RGB and warm RGB lights let you mix in a little bit of RGB with that. Um, so this is the cold RGB, so it's going to control what gets mixed in with the cold white LEDs. Um, so let's just say we want to add in a little blue. Um, so now we've got blue in with it, and as we fade more toward uh, cool white, we're going to get more of the blue. And if we go all warm white, then the blue disappears. And then likewise with the uh, warm RGB setting, um, you're going to get to mix in a little bit of RGB with the warm white LEDs. Um, so now as you go back and forth, you're not only going to get the cold and warm white LEDs, um, you're also going to get the corresponding RBG for these settings. And then you can use these sliders at the bottom to control the ratio of RGB to uh, the white LEDs. So here you can turn down the RGB LEDs. 
And here you can control the, the white brightness of the white LEDs for warm white. Um, this one up top I disabled just because it wasn't really that useful to have a third slider. So I just have only the bottom two. The next setting here is the bulb's max power. And that basically indicates what the PWM is going to be when the uh, actual light entity and home assistant is set to 100. Um, so by default, the PWM is going to be 80%. And the reason I had to lower that was just because we had a little bit of an overheating issue that some people were reporting. Um, and so turning this down to 80% helps quite a bit and you don't really lose a lot of brightness. I wouldn't recommend that you really mess with this. Uh, keep it at 80. You could turn it up. Uh, make sure you take some precautions to keep the bulbs cool. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up with a dead bulb. Finally, the last setting here is cough bulb no has. And so you can turn this on if you're not going to be using the bulb with Home Assistant. Um, by default, ESP Home will reboot itself every 15 minutes if it doesn't connect to Home Assistant. But the thing is that I know a lot of people, they just want to use the bulbs with the HTTP API or maybe they're just using MQTT. Um, so in that case, that rebooting kind of can screw things up. So turn this on and you're going to stop the bulb from rebooting every 15 minutes. There's also a few diagnostic entities I'm going to run through real quick. Um, first is the clear Wi-Fi credentials button. And that does just what it says. If you press the button, it's going to clear the stored Wi-Fi credentials and put up its access point um, so that you can enter in some different credentials and get the bulb uh, connected to a different Wi-Fi network. The uh, DDP debug uh, dropdown, that's going to allow you to um, print out received DDP packets for debug purposes. Um, you can either print out only uh, imperfect packets or you can print out every received packet. It's just a little something that might help you figure out why DDP is not working right. Um, debug your setup. IP address, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to show the IP address of the bulb. Um, restart firmware is another button. It's just going to restart the firmware. And then finally the uptime, uh, basically just the uptime in seconds. Uh, it kind of helps you know if the bulb is staying powered on or if it's rebooting itself every once in a while. You can keep an eye on that. And that's all of the settings and entities for the bulbs, at least as a firmware version 1.82. But definitely reach out if you've got other ideas. Um, definitely want to keep the updates rolling and add as many cool new features as I can.